five, four, three, two. What's going on, Phantom Force and Cosmox fans alike? This is Phantom Base coming at you with our week number four match of the IBL versus Umar, coach of the uh, Miami Infernaves. We are your coach to the Cosmo New York Cosmox, in case you haven't been made aware. <laughs> anyway, so taking a look at. Uh, Let's just hop right into this. Taking a look at Umar's team, his team is kind of threatening to us. Um, let's take a look. Let's see. Um, uh, let me look at his exact roster so I can make sure that you guys are fully informed. Um, his exact roster Kieran Black, Cresselia, Heracross, Silvali, Mega Pidgeot, Magneton, Moltres, Gligar, Vileplume, Barbarical, and Rodenfoss. So the Kieran Black, Moltres, and Barbarical as his Z Crystal users. Our team is as follows. Our team is Landers, Therian, Victini, Noivern, and Polian, Mega Dehancy, Licky, Licky, Decidua, Hitmontop, Electivire, and Weezing with Landers, Therian as our Z-Crystal user. In case you guys aren't aware, the Z-Crystal rule is that you have to be, you have to purchase them. And so with that, whatever leftover points, if you got like 20 leftover points, you can get one. 40, you can get two. It just really depends. So, um, we can only afford to have one. And, uh, after this draft, because I wanted this draft to be really, really good, because I had to make a lot of switches to make this team this team happen. If you guys didn't check that check that uh a switches video that the IBL uploaded, please go check that out. Um, I'll see if I can't leave a link in the description of my last of this video and the video before this. So anyway, let's go over the team matchup here. I'm gonna quickly look at his. We're gonna quickly look at his team and see. Obviously, he's got a Gligar, Kieran Black, Barbarical, Moltres. Celia and Magneton. So what did I expect out of this team? Uh, I expected this thing to be physically defensive, 100%. This thing was his best check to Landris. His best uh, defensive check to Landris. Um, Kieran Black, I expected to be Scarf, 100%. I expected a Shell Smash, Barbarical with like kind of the Focus Sash or White Herb. I expected a um, kind of an offensive Moltres, I guess, with U-turn for like initiative and stuff like that. Um, I need, expected a more... S I don't know what kind of Cresselia I expected. Maybe like a bulky calm mindset. And then I expected a. I actually expected double Scarfers with Scarf Magneton. Either that or I expected like a, an air balloon Magneton with a Magnapool. I'm trying to catch my Empoleon off guard. Now, the team I brought this week was. I brought a Salt Vest Electivire because I needed to switch into his. Mega Pidgeot, I need to switch into his Cure in Black Decent, decently. We can live two Earth Powers from a non attack boosting item, uh, Cure in Black, with the spread that we have. And we killed, uh, we, two we killed with Cross Chop. Uh, even a, a bulky set. Um, we also had uh, Wild Charge, Ice Punch, and Earthquake. Earthquake is for things like, obviously, for the Magneton, Cross Chop, like I said, it's two we kill on. The only thing I could use to two we kill Cure in Black, Ice Punch was for Gliger. Wild charge for everything else on his team. Okay, so next up on the roster we had our cheeky set of the week was. So I'm not going to reveal too much about it. Well, actually I will, only because I don't face Umar again, and he's not in our conference either. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm bringing a Defiant Empoleon with with Stealth Rock and three attacks. We're bringing Liquidation. We're bringing a uh, Steel Wing, and we're bringing um, Earthquake. Steel Wing is to catch. Um, Kieran Black, and two kills Kieran Black plus two. Liquidation nukes the crap out of a lot of his team, and two kills physically defensive. Gliscor has a roll to two kill uh, Cresselia, and uh, Earthquake hits the Magneton and the Barbarical, and we are running a Shed Shell so that we can escape from Magneton, get into things like Electivire, switch in on the Electric Attack, get the Motor Drive boost, so we can potentially outspeed his Scarf Kieran Black. Next up, we have Rock Polish Mega Dancy. We revealed this entire spread, this entire set. We're running enough speed to creep. Uh, we're running modest, but enough max speed, so we're creeping Cure and Black. And we are running enough special attack to Oko, uh, Cure and Black, and two Oko, Oko Cure and Black, Oko Violet Magneton, and Oko uh, a few other things like Power Gym and things like that, uh, like Mega Pidgey. Um, and then the rest of them in HP and like the 4 4 and uh, Defense Spit F. We're running Moonblast, Power Gym, and uh, Earth Power. Next up, we're bringing a Physical Defensive Weezing. Once again, because it's our best check to Gligar, it's our best check to Barbarical. We're running Haze this week. No, we're running Clear Smog. My bad. We're running Clear Smog. We're running Clear Smog, Sludge Bomb, um, 
toxic spikes and flamethrower. I believe. Yes. Sounds about right. Toxic spikes because that is one of the greatest answers to cure in black ever. Um, it also helps us deal with a potentially sashed, um, freaking, what you call it? A potentially sashed, um, barbarical. And then we're running Thunderbolt. Pretty sure. We're running Thunderbolt? Yeah, we're running Thunderbolt for the barbarical. And the PGI. And the Moltres. So, yeah. Weezing was a, um, very cheeky set this week. Like, it just coverage moves and, uh, clear smog with Haze. Haze that he couldn't set up with his Cresselia or with his, um, or even with his, uh, he, that way he couldn't even be an agility pass Glider, and he couldn't shell, shell smash with his, uh, Barbarical freely, he can bust his white herb and cause him a lot of problems. And if he got another, if he went for another shell smash, he actually killed with Thunderbolt, I think, at his minus one spit F. Our next set is our uh, Decidueye, a mono attacking trapping set. Spirit Shackle, Roost, Substitute, and Haze. Haze is a secondary check to our, his Barbarical. We also used, wanted to use it to counter Cresselia and to kind of scout around its set a little bit. We could use it as a free switch into Magneton, could switch into freaking um, Gliger if he wasn't running like knockoff or acrobatics. And we're running a Culberberry set. I don't know why we're running Culberberry. I think it was for knockoff Gliger. And also for a couple of things. I didn't want to have to deal with, um, what else on his team was it? That I didn't want to have to deal with. Um, I can't remember what his team was. What did I say his team was? Oh, I pulled up the doc. I didn't have a picture. I didn't actually take a picture of his team. I literally said no. As far as like, I don't know. Anyway, so let's go into the soccer bus. Check it out. What was I scared of? Oh, knock off Heracross. I was more scared of Heracross with this set. I could trap it and kill it with them. And if he was a sword stance set, we could, we could wall Heracross pretty well. His knockoff into his second knockoff. Even if he was a guts flame orb, wasn't too it killing us. We could roost on it and just whittle him down with his own trap and whittle him down with his own burn. The last set was another another time we're bringing choice card from Noivern, and that's just because we needed a check, a backup check to um, a backup offensive check to not only um, scarf cure and black, but also we were we were creeping a plus two barbarical, and on top of that. We are also bringing it as a potential switcher. We have a Draco Meteor, U-Turn, Hurricane, and I believe we're running Trickery, or Switcheroo, Switcheroo. So we could do one of two things. We could Switcheroo the Cresselia, or we could Switcheroo um, the Gliger, because Gliger, without a Eviolite, is much less bulky. We can 2 it kill it with a Electivire, actually. And it lets us allows us to have a pretty free time of setting up with things like, um, with setting up with our Deancy. So. That is all for this team prep. No, I say team prep, our team overview. We can go ahead and go into what we thought in the battle. So, in the battle, I was thinking, okay, he's going to lead with. I'm thinking he's either going to lead with Kieran Black, because it's Scarf, pretty much guaranteed. Or I expect him to lead with Magneton, kind of. Because I didn't bring a ground type, I expect him to kind of go for a Volt Switch. If Volt Switch spam, unless he. This is just scared of my Electivire for some reason. I was like, or he could go with his Glider. And I was like, if we. That's a. It's two out of three chance he goes with, or one out of two chance, one out of three chance he goes with Gliger because his other Pokemon are not good leads. Um, Barbarical is his cleanup, obviously. Not gonna, don't want him to deal with that. Moltres not gonna match up well against Electivire, and um, Cresselia doesn't want to get set up on by anything, and he, I could potentially lead Decidueye and trap it. So, hindsight's always twenty twenty here, and that Gliger was kind of an obvious lead because he could U-turn out, he could set up rocks, he could toxic things. It, it could be an interesting time, so I didn't want him. But I didn't really think too much about it, so instead I decided to leave my Electivire, and you'll see very quickly what he led off with. So, um, yeah, overall I felt Electivire was my best lead, but yeah, this is Umar sending a challenge. Not even bad. And we leave with Buzz McNabb, the Electivire. Hopefully someone catches this reference. Um, but he leaves with the Gliger. I'm sitting thinking, crap, okay. Not a good lead start for us. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, he's going to do one of two things. He's going to set up rocks, he's going to outright attack me. Now, I can live anyone hit from this thing, guaranteed, with my bulk investment. And because he didn't bring Pidgeot, this thing is a lot more less valuable. We can still get off good damage on a lot of stuff. 
What I wanted to do was scout his set. If he was fully physically defensive, he wasn't too a killed by Ice Punch. But if he, or if he was fully physically defensive, he wasn't too a killed by Ice Punch. But if he was a Spadef set, for some stupid reason, if he was a Spadef set, he was actually too a killed by Ice Punch, even with the Aviolite. So I wanted to scout it. And of course, when we click Ice Punch here, let's see, and you can clearly tell this thing is physically defensive. So he goes for Earthquake right out. So like, okay. This is not good news for my Electivire. But we live. He gets a really high roll, which is interesting. So I'm like, okay. My next thing is, okay, I gotta think about what I wanna to go for here. Because he could go for an Earthquake here, he could go for a Roost. Either way, I can capitalize on both of those. Go, And I thought of one of two options. I wanted to go, I could either go into um, Noivern, kinda predict that, but that really wouldn't put us in a good position. Because um, if we go into Noivern, as he goes for a roost, he just switches out. Whereas if I go into Decidueye, he's not exactly—he's not exactly inclined to switch out because he thinks he can do things. I guess, I guess he thinks he can do things to us. So what we do is we go into Decidueye first because I wanted to scout more of a set, and because we can guarantee live a lot of hits from this thing, Decidueye. So we go into Decidueye. As he goes for the roost, which I kind of expected, so I'm like, okay, we can trap this thing in now because we're running. Let me tell you, on this Decidueye, we're running a lot of speed. We're running enough speed to creep. Um, we're running enough speed to creep a no speed Gligar, which also means we're running enough speed to creep Chris a no speed Cresselia, or even a, a somewhat a tiny bit invested Cresselia. Which means we're also creeping um, a couple other things on his team, but um, most of those two things were what I was wanting so I could trap them. Or also a no speed Magneton. So, with this in mind, we decide we're going to click Spirit Shackle because if he goes into Crest, thinking he can set up for some goofy reason, um, we want to trap it. We, but no, 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 we click Substitute. That's right. Okay, this is me scouting his set more. So, here's what I was thinking. Okay, he's got one of three options. He goes for a knockoff. Okay, this is what I expected him to do. Not what he could have. Not what. In reality, and he could have done anything, but like, what I expected is one of three options. He goes for U turn, he goes for knockoff, or he goes for toxic. It's not going for earthquake, there's no reason we're going to go for earthquake, because it clearly doesn't do any damage to me, hardly. And I expected him to go for, or he could go for rocks. That was my four options here. He goes for knockoff, U turn, toxic, or rocks. All four of those are mitigated by me going for substitute here, because I also want to scout if I was faster. And it turns out we are. As he goes for toxic, which is like the perfect turn for us. So I'm like, okay, here, if I was to set up Decidueye, this would have been perfect. Because looking at, if you'll see in the next turn, how a set up Decidueye would have straight cleaned up this game here. But as you see here, we decide to go for Spirit Shackle to keep this thing trapped in. Because at this rate, I don't think he can break my sub. Like, <coughs> not in one shot. But click Spirit Shackle. We trap him in. And he goes for an earthquake. So I'm like, okay, that's his only offensive move. So that tells me his last move is either defog or rocks. He clearly doesn't go for rocks. So, um, and look, he doesn't even break the sub with with this. So we're just gonna keep, keep going for spirit shackle. Now we click spirit shackle here, and I'm like, and I'm like, okay, so he's gonna click earthquake here and probably break our sub at this point. So we don't have a whole lot of physical defense investment. We're more spadef uh, decidui here. And um as he does break our sub with the final with the second earthquake. Now we can sub up on him again as he goes for second uh, an earthquake. And we can I just kinda wanted to wear him down a little bit get him frustrated a little bit, because he's trapped. He can't go anywhere. He didn't bring he clearly didn't bring U-turn, otherwise he would have gone for it already. And so we're just kinda letting this thing wear his earthquakes out. He crits the he crits the sub and it still doesn't kill it. So we click Roost. And um, just to get our HP back up to full. I'm thinking, okay. I'm getting kind of tired of this tall fest, but I'm getting him stuck into the thing. He's got to keep clicking Earthquake to keep my sub broken. So. I'm going to keep the pressure on me to keep me keep me going for sub. So I'm thinking, okay, here's my chance to get into Noivern. And that's what exactly what I do. I switch out Noivern here, expecting him to go for Earthquake again, expecting me to sub. So there's some reason for me not to sub. It, just, it would have been annoying, but I wanted to keep, to speed up the game a little bit. So I went for 
And what Infernia is obviously Eviolite. It's not like Yachi or something goofy. So we, he clicks Earthquake here. And I'm thinking, okay. His switch here is either into um, Cresselia to chew a hit, or to go into, um, like, that's what I expect. I expect him to go into Cresselia to chew the hit, because it has Ice Beam as a return attack, so that would be really good for him to go for. Now, clearly, you can see he's about to withdraw. So I'm thinking, okay, if he goes into Cress, and I click U turn, I can get it back out into Decidueye and trap it. If he goes into, um, what else do you have that he could go into? I guess we went out of Kirim. Which wouldn't make any sense. I could go out to um, Electivire, scout a set more from there, or sac, sac Electivire, go back out into Neuburn and scare it out. There's just a lot of factors. If you go out into Magneton, we can U turn out, get out into um, Electivire and kill it. That's, that's just my thought process here. So he withdraws. He goes into Moltres of all things. So I'm like, okay. We could have free U turn off of this thing. I was scared. I was like, please don't be flame body. He's pressure. So I'm like, perfect. He's not flame body. So we can safely go for U turn and get out against this thing. We can go into the horrifying monster against his entire team, which is the DNC. Now, going out into Megan here. And the first thing I'm thinking is okay, if he's got Steel Wing or HP Steel, he will go for it now. So I've got to make sure that I can outspeed this. I've got to make sure that I outspeed this thing. Well, for one thing, I want to scare this thing out because this DNC is a horrifying monster. I was scared of this thing being Steel Wing so bad, or HP Steel, that I kind of wanted to. But at the same time, I was like, he brought it in. Which means he's not scarfed. Not the way he brought it in. He's more of an offensive. I'm guessing he's more of an offensive set. He's probably got like a life orb, or maybe even he's got like. He's not, he doesn't have leftovers, so he could be like choice specs even. Like, that would be a horrifying set to see, honestly. It's voice specs and uh, Moltres with, like, Defog and three attacks. That'd be crazy. Like, Defog, U turn, Fire Blast, HP Steel would have been a crazy set. So, um. Uh, I go into DNC expecting him to. Uh. I wanted to make. Obviously, make him think that he's going to have to, st to switch out. Like, DNC was there to force his hand. Now, here, I contemplated going for Rock Polish because. I could have done a lot of damage, but he had things that could handle me. One, I didn't have rocks up, so I couldn't safely go for rock polish with a potentially sturdy magneton back there. Also, couldn't do it potentially with the um, barbarical being potentially sashed. Um, and his team wasn't weakened enough yet, so I couldn't safely go for rock polish, so I was going for damage. So, he don't obviously have forced out his. Uh, he goes, I forced out his. Uh, what you call it? His Moltres. Back out into Gligar of all things. Okay, can we Mega Evolve go for Power Gym? Because if he was brave enough to stay in, we killed him. This also told me that he wasn't Scarfed. So, that was good. We click Power Gym here. I'm thinking, okay. He's going to have to double, because we need to kill this thing with anything. I'm like, okay, his switch in now is either into Barbarical or into um, Cresselia, because they can chew any hits from this thing if you don't go for Earth Power. And we're not going for Earth Power because it doesn't hit Cresselia. It doesn't hit Gligar. Moonblast is obviously my play because it covers his entire team outside of, um... It covers the entirety of his team outside of, um, Moltres. And Moltres drops to a power gem, so there's no reason for him to switch it in. <laughs> Unless he's scarfed. So. Um, here I click Moonblast, and he makes he makes the good play, and he goes into Cresselia. Now, clearly, click Moonblast to scout some damage, and we can tell this thing is more of a physically defensive set based off that damage, because that did a lot of damage for being a crest. So, here, I'm like, okay, we can make the ballsy play and potentially go and. We could do a lot of things here. We could go into our. Um, we could go into our. Um, what was it? Uh, like, really, my only play here was. To go into Decidueye, because I didn't want him to be potentially packing HP Steel or Energy Ball. Um, so I was like, my best play is to go into Decidueye here to scout his set and to potentially trap him if he decides to stay in, which was crazy on his part if he does. So I switched into Decidueye here because we're at full health. We can take anything from this thing. Especially because the Calx told me he's got almost no offensive investment. And after the Shadow Ball, it is clear he has no offensive investment. <laughs> like, 
and we see the leftovers, so that tells me we'll see that he's getting back up to about 75% health or so. So, looking at this, I'm like, okay, here's my chance to show off this is this decision I said. We can very, very easily handle this Cresselia right now. So, what I'm going to do is, because I know I'm creeping in a speed Cresselia, we are going to click Spirit Shackle. He has no switch into Spirit Shackle, period. So, we're going for it. And we do find out we do outspeed this thing with the speed investment we have. So we click Spirit Shackle, and we trap this Cresselia in, meaning that he cannot sit here forever. And he goes for the Ice Beam. So, like, okay, we're going to scout some damage here, because it looks like we can live very easily another Ice Beam. And so what I'm going to do here is click Spirit Shackle again. Now, this is just to guarantee we can kill him in the next turns, because it turns out this thing actually is kind of... Decidueye is actually kind of powerful. Like, overall, just looking at this thing taking all this damage. He goes for Ice Beam again, and we clearly chew that. Now, I was glad for no freezes, because I was really expecting freezes here. Like, just the whole Gypsy King moment of his Decidueye always got frozen in Season 5 of the ITL. It's really kind of funny. But, um, anyway, so, he gets the lefties back, and I'm like, okay. If he's going to go for Moonlight, he's going to go for it here. So I'm going to click Roost here. It's funny because he actually clicks protect. I'm like, okay, um, I wanted to guarantee that my decision would be a, full, a good amount of health to be sure be able to handle the rest of this team. But he has protect over moonlight, so I'm like, okay, um, that sure that guarantees you lefty's recovery, but but also guarantees you're still dropping to this spirit shackle because of the damage we were doing earlier. So we click spirit shackle here and we kill this thing off, which is really good for us because I hate Cresselia. Cresselia is a monster. As far as some bulk is concerned, we kill this thing off of Sidua though. And here's where he goes back out. He goes into Kirim. You're just like, okay, we're going to have to pick a sack here. And I've obviously got the easiest sacrifice mod in the game. To, uh, in the game. I say in the game. We got the easiest sack in the back with uh, Electivar because he's at 25 HP. There's no reason for us to preserve him. And we can easily, easily go out into. Just kill it off and go back into um, Noivern to scout the damage. Or to pick off this thing. Now, here he makes a very interesting play. And he goes into his goes into his magneton. So I'm guessing he's expecting me to go into Empoleon to chew the ice beam because that is the the play that makes sense to me. But instead, I double onto Electivire, trying to sack it. And instead, we get a good switch in because we outspeed this thing. We could kill it with earthquake. And uh, we also can't, he can't volt switch on us, he has to double out. So, we're going to click Earthquake here, we have no reason to predict just yet. Um, I could have clicked um, chop, Cross Chop, but uh, his switch into Curum wasn't exactly happening, so I knew he'd go into Glider anyway. So we click Earthquake, but we know we outspeed this thing, so we can just click Ice Punch and kill it from this range. Based off the damage we did earlier, we kill this through Ice Punch. We drop this thing with the tie, this thing drops the Ice Punch. So Electivire did more than did his job here. It killed off something. That's what I wanted. So now let's switch into Kyurem is obvious. He's gonna go for an ice beam and kill us. That's fine. So it's kinda what I wanted. He goes for an ice beam here. And uh okay. now our next play is to go into our Noiburn, because we can actually kill him with a Draco Meteor from here. At yeah, full he would kill him from a Draco Meteor. Crazy enough. So we first come found out he does have a choice scarf, so he is locked into ice beam. So we're forcing him to switch out here, and as he switches out, I'm like, he's going to go into his thing, a Magneton, to this uh, Draco Meteor. Which I'm like, that's cool. So we click Draco, and we do, just look at this damage, look at this damage thing, it's crazy. It takes so much damage for a Draco Meteor from a Noivern, of all things. Okay. And we're Scarf, not Specs, so we switch out, we're going to go into our, um, our Decidueye to two any hit he wants to go for, so we can... Safely assume that he's going to go for a hidden power. Oh, he goes for a hidden power trying to check, kick, pick us off guard. I don't know. It's hidden power ice, clearly. So we click roost, or we click sub here to see if he's going to go for a volt switch or something else. I guess we're hidden power again. I kind of wanted to scout if he was going to go for him. Um, if he was going to double out into his Kirim. But instead, he just clicks HP. So I'm like, okay, we're going to click roost now that we know we outspeed this thing. So, looking at the rest of his team, I'm like, okay. Here's what needs to happen. Now that we've got chip damage on everything on his team except for Barbarical, 
Okay, what's funny is he got the volt. He, he goes for volt switch of all things. Like that's crazy. So he's kind of going into his mulch race now. So I'm like, okay, here's where the cheekiness begins. First off, the U-turn damage on this thing is clutch, and that we actually did get potentially break a sash, which was funny. We broke the sturdy potential sturdy on oh, this magneton. Turns out later it was magnet pull for my Empoleon, which is what I expected, but I couldn't risk the sturdy. No. Uh, we have Kim Black. <laughs> Has been guaranteed scarf, so we have to assume that he's going to be not very much invested into HP. Just because he could be creeping my scarf electivire, which speed does, so he has to be max speed, max special attack. So, um, here is where I'm going to make the play of the game, I think. He goes into his multi here. Like, this thing is guaranteed set up fodder, depending on what he has as an offensive move. Or depending on what he has as offensive moves. Now, we can pretty safely assume that he's got flamethrower. He's got, he could have roost, he could have defog. But I, I think he had defog on Gligar though, so he's got roost, def uh, flamethrower. Potentially, oh, sorry for the yawns, guys. Potentially U turn and hidden power. One of two options either ice or steel. Ice for landers, steel for freaking, um, DNC. So we're gonna have to scout here. I actually stayed in, because I was like, if he's going to kill me, he's going to kill me, now. I want to free switch into DNC. But he gives me more than the information I wanted. He gives me the information I needed here. He gets, goes for hidden power. Okay, and this tells now. He's HP Ice. So, that tells me right now that we can safely take this thing out with um, DNC. Without taking any damage. So we took, we give, we give for Spirit Shack, only off chance he decided to switch into either Curum or for some reason Barbarical. I don't know why he was switching to that, but like, it covered all his options. Because it let us trap whatever he's going to have. Except for Magneton, of course. We can switch out and act accordingly. But because he went for Hidden Power Ice here, we can very safely assume that he's got no coverage for DNC. So, we're going to switch out into DNC and begin the process of what I like to call breaking out the broom. So he goes for a flamethrower here, so I'm like, okay, that was the best move he could have gone for against us anyway, because we chew that really easily. So next we click rock polish, because I had to guarantee we outsped the cure in black, outsped a plus two barbarical, and he goes for him power, like, you already revealed his ice, you're not doing anything to us with that. So we're killing you with power gem. And so, that's the whole point of this thing. We killed this thing with the power gem. Very easily, might I add. He didn't have steel wing, clearly, otherwise he would have gone for it and killed us. Um, so, his next place to go into is Magneton, but now that his sturdy's broken, we can click Earth Power and kill it. And he's, even his Chocoberry range, he's dead. Like, this isn't, he's way out of range for Chocoberry. So, this thing drops. Um, purely offensive Cure in Black, clearly, because Moonblast is a guaranteed one shot on this thing. Power Gem is a one shot on it, but Moonblast is more of a one shot, so we click Moonblast here. And as you can see, this thing's HP is going to go wee bye bye And we kill off Kieran Black. So the last move mon has got is Barbarical. And this was the scariest po point for me. I actually spent a lot of time calcing on this particular set because I wasn't able to get rocks up on this thing. Look at his HP stat. Look at this. It is at full. So the scariest thing this thing could do is be sash. I was scared of this thing being sash so bad, but I had to calc and make sure that I could get it down to um, range for um, my wheezing to kill it or my um, decidui to kill it. So, wheezing took a plus two on liquidation very easily and killed with Thunderbolt. Um, but the thing I was scared of is the damage roll from Earth Power. It was 97 to 116. We had a roll to not kill him here. Like, that's the scary part. We had a roll to not kill him here. Granted, we still outsped him. Because we were at plus two, there's no reason for us to worry about it. But I was still making sure, I wanted to make absolutely sure that we didn't lose this game to a Barbarical. Because that's also a Z-Crystal user. So if he wasn't Sash and he lived, and he goes for, like, a Liquidation first and kills us, then he could set up a Rock Polish. Or not a Rock Polish, a Shell Smash. Now, granted, he couldn't have use Shell Smash, I don't think, because we had the, the tools to beat him. He, he was, the game was lost, but I wanted to, I was, I was just kind of worried. I didn't want to lose to an oversight. 
So like, you know what? Our best play here is just click Earth Power. We have to do it. And hope that we can kill him. I click Earth Power here. And luckily the 83.4% chance to kill him was in our favor this time. So we killed him. So nice clean Bible victory over Umar and the Miami Infernapes. Um good game there, Umar. Um really glad that we got to have this match. I am excited to see how far you make it in the rest of the season. Um if you guys haven't checked it out, his link will be in the description below, hopefully. Um and if that is all that's been for me, this has been Fan and Base. We will catch you guys next week as we face the commissioner of the league himself, uh, uh Dark Devil, coach of the Marlsboro Mudsdales. And uh hopefully we can pull out continue our win streak here. And uh but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We will catch you guys next time. Bye guys.